What's up guys? The next in the series of eccentric methods, we're gonna start looking at overloaded eccentrics. So basically with these methods, what we're doing is priming the body to handle heavier loads by handling maximal or super maximal loads on the eccentric phase of the lift where we're stronger. So generally when we're doing overloaded eccentrics, we're gonna be going anywhere from 90 to 120% of our one rep max, depending on the training phase and depending on the method that we're using. But the goal is still the same in, in terms of what we've looked at in terms of the other eccentric methods. We want a nice stable tempo all the way down and we want even control all the way down as well so that we're not having any loose points in the lift. Now. Ideally, overloaded eccentrics will be done using what are called weight releases or eccentric hooks. These are a really great tool for, for your training and can lead to really rapid strength gains, but they're not always readily available. So what we're gonna show you in this video is two methods that you can use to get overloaded eccentrics without access to weight releases. Now, the first method we're gonna show you is where you can do the eccentric and the concentric phase together, but this is gonna require two training partners. They're gonna unload and reload the plates for you so that you can do the eccentric phase with more weight than you do the concentric phase. So what we've got set up here on the bench is a pin just above the height that Naomi is gonna bring the bar down to to touch her chest. So the bar is gonna be say half an inch to an inch off her chest at the bottom of the lift. So she's doing as close to the full range of motion as possible. Likewise, if we were doing a squat, the pin would be set just a tiny bit above her bottom position. She's gonna lower the weight, which is the super maximal weight in this case, so anywhere between 100 and 120% down to the pin. Sheena and I are gonna be either side of the bar. We then remove the extra load, which is put on the outside of the bar without a collar on, so it can be removed and put back on quickly. And then Naomi can press up with the reduced weight. She's then gonna rack the bar and perform a cluster set because Sheena and I then need time to re-put the weight back on. Naomi's gonna set up. So now we've got what would be the super maximal load on the bar. She's gonna unrack it, and she's gonna bring it down under control to the pin. Again, we're looking for maybe three, four, or five seconds on the way down. Once she touches down, we take the weight off. Naomi presses up, racks it, and then the weight goes back on. Now, in a cluster set, she may rest anywhere between 30 and 40 seconds between these reps, because if she was doing a real set, that that eccentric phase would be really maximal and very difficult to recover from. But she's just gonna go again here straight away just to demonstrate. Again, she's gonna bring it down, say four or five seconds, nice and controlled. Soft onto the pin. Sheena and I then remove the weight and press up. Perfect, okay. So that is how you would perform it on a bench press or a squat if you've got two training partners. Likewise with the squat, you get to the bottom position, your training partners would slide the plates off, you would then do the concentric phase, re-rack the bar, and your training partners would put the plates back on. Okay, so if you don't have training partners to help take the plates off and on the bar for you, you can do overloaded eccentrics on your own by lowering the bar down to a pin. Now the difference with this is, because you're gonna be unloading the bar yourself, you can't do it as a cluster set, and you're not gonna have the concentric part of the lift immediately afterwards. So it's not gonna carry over to the main lift quite as well. And also you're not gonna be able to do as much volume. So whereas we might do a couple of cluster sets of the previous method that I showed before, maybe two to five reps, depending on how heavy it is on the way down, when you're doing it on your own, you might do two to four sets of one single repetition with two or three minutes rest in between. So what that's gonna look like is what Naomi's gonna demonstrate here is exactly what we did before, where she lowers down the super maximal load to the pin, which is set just above the bottom position. But then because she doesn't have training partners, she's simply gonna get out from under the bar and then she would reset everything herself. So that would be the set done. Okay, so at this point now, you take your two, three minutes rest. At that point, you'd use that time to strip the bar off, put it back in the rack. Imagine if, for example, if you're doing this on squat and you've got a couple of plates each side, that alone can take quite a bit of time to do. Now, remember, when we're doing these, not only are we gonna get a good carry over to the maximal lifting, say in the 90 plus percent range, because of the increased stability and things like that, the main thing we're gonna get out of this is the desensitization of the Golgi tendon organs. So the tendon organs are little receptors in your muscle bellies that essentially act as a handbrake for your muscles. They're there to protect you from creating too much force and injuring yourself either by a muscle tear or, or tearing a tendon. Now they're set very conservative. In most people who are untrained, they might be able to use say 50, 60% of their max force before those organs tell the muscle to stop firing. 
because they were concerned about injury. Now, when we're doing overloaded eccentrics, a big benefit we get for the nervous system is that we desensitize those so we can increase the amount of our actual force production we're allowed to use. So when we get kind of top level athletes who've been training for a long time and using methods such as this, rather than say 50 or 60%, they might be able to use 80 or 90% of their mass force production before those tendon organs tell the body to stop producing so much force. So if we can just have Naomi demonstrate one more time. What we do during our rest period is use that to strip it back off. So again, this would be performed just for a couple of sets of one. Actually, usually first in the workout, because it can work really well as like a nervous system activation tool before you go and do your regular lifting. And again, we're looking for a controlled tempo, anywhere say around four to five seconds on the way down. Perfect. 